Hi guys, welcome to our channel. In today's video, we're gonna look at what vegetables you can sow and start to grow in May. As always, I will put a list of all the vegetables in the description below. Peas. If you haven't done so already, May is a great time to start growing your peas. You can grow them directly in the ground, however they're at risk of rodents as they love eating the seeds. So we recommend growing them in gutters. You sow them in gutters and ideally you want to keep them off the ground and grow them on in a greenhouse. Um, we've got them in the greenhouse but we haven't got any shelves in here so we're just growing them on the ground and they seem to be doing really well. To grow peas in gutters, get a piece of guttering that's the same length as the bed that you will later transplant the plants into. Fill up halfway with a rich compost. We like to mix in perlite to make it for more free draining as there's no holes in the drain pipe so we don't want them sitting in water. Space the seedlings along the gutter in a zigzag formation about 7cm apart. Gently push the seeds in slightly then cover with more of the mixture of the compost and perlite. Then water thoroughly and then grow on either inside or in a greenhouse. One good thing about growing them in gutters is when you come to plant them out, all you've got to do is dig a trench where you want them to go and then you can slide them all out in one go into the trench and that means you haven't disturbed the roots at all. Growing them this way means transplanting outside easy as you already have ready-made rows that can simply be slid into the trench. Once transplanted, water the plants when they start to flower and two weeks after. Add a thick mulch around the base of the plants to help present the soil drying out. After flowering, plants need sufficient water for the pods to swell. Check the soil moisture at root level regularly and water if necessary. Beetroot. Again, May is the time to get your second lot of beetroot in. And as was bound to happen after in the last video saying how easy beetroot is to grow, how we've never had any problems, with seeds could germinating, guess what? The ones we planted last month, they've not germinated at all. It's not surprising with the crazy weather we've had in April, where the days have been quite warm, but the nights have been really cold and dropping below freezing quite often. So I'm gonna cover them with a fleece and hopefully they're just in hibernation and will still germinate over the next couple of weeks. I thought one way to help prevent pests is not to grow too much of the same veg next to each other. So we're trying out on this bed. Uh, we've already got the carrots in and the garlic, so we're gonna put our second lot of beetroot in between them. To help with the germination of the beetroot seeds, I soaked them in warm water for two hours before sowing. Beetroot are super easy to sow, very similar to carrots. Dig a trench where you want them to grow, Line it with organic compost, then sow the seeds thinly. With the beetroot, I took more time sowing them more accurately so that less time will be taken when thinning them out. You then need to cover the seeds with a thin layer of compost and water well. Not forgetting to label everything, as if you're like me, you'll forget what everything is. Carrots. May is the time to get your second lot of carrots in the ground. See in our last video in April that we sowed our early carrots in this bed here. They have germinated, however they're a little bit behind because of all the cold weather we've had in April. Um, we're now going to sow our second lot of carrots. This year we are growing three types of carrots. We've already sowed an early variety of carrot and now in May we will sow a variety called Chantenay Royal, which is a shorter type of carrot. Carrots are really simple to sow. Dig a trench where you want them to grow. We line the bottom of the trench with some organic compost, then sprinkle the seeds across thinly and cover them over with some more compost. This is to make sure all the seeds have good contact with the compost which will help with germination. We spread them thinly so there are less seedlings to thin out as that is what can attract the carrot flies. Once the seeds germinate and start to grow and when they are big enough to handle you will need to thin them out to around 10cm per plant. Carrots are drought resistant, so they don't need much watering, but in long dry spells, they benefit from a good soaking. Fast growing weeds can drown out carrots, so weed regularly between rows. If you've grown carrots before, you'll know the excitement of the harvest. 
pulling them out the ground, not knowing if they're going to be big, small, wonky. It's one of my favorite vegetables to grow. And in May, you can sow directly into the ground. However, if the temperatures keep dropping like they have been in April, you will need to cover them with a fleece or a cloche. Squashes. If you haven't already, May's the time to start sowing your squashes. You will need to sow them indoors to make sure they germinate and grow them on to make young, healthy plants with the idea of hardening them off at the end of May and planting them out in June. We're growing a few varieties. We're growing a mix of ornamental squashes, one that's called uh, Crown Prince, and then some courgettes. To sow squashes, first you'll need to soak the seeds in water for 24 hours. This will help with germination. Fill a tray of plugs with seed compost. We like to mix in perlite to make it sure it's free draining. Sow two seeds in each plug, 2.5 centimeters deep. Leave them on a warm, sunny windowsill to germinate. With so many different types of squashes, don't forget to label them. If they germinate well, they are quite fast growing. So in two to three weeks, they will need potting on. If only one of the seeds germinates in the plug, you can pot it straight on. Otherwise, you will need to split the two seedlings and pot them on individually. We've tried growing them before just on the ground, but they've been attacked a lot by slugs. So this year, we have built a traditional A-frame support system to grow our squashes vertically. If you'd like to build your own A-frame, check out the video we made going step by step how we built it. Beans. May should be the time to sow beans directly in the ground. However, the weather is still a bit cold and we are getting the odd frost in the evening. So wait until the last frost has been before you sow them directly in the ground. You can get ahead and sow them indoors like we have. You sow them in the same way as the squashes, two beans per plug, germinate them on a sunny windowsill, and then pot them on into bigger pots like these and grow them on in the greenhouse. This year we're growing three types of beans. We're growing a dwarf runner bean, and two French beans, one green and one yellow. We grew green and yellow French beans last year in our raised beds and they did really well, we got a real good harvest. So we're hoping to get the same again this year. French beans like the sun and warmth, they dislike the cold and wind and a single frost can kill them outright. That's why we suggest sowing them inside first and then growing them on in the greenhouse until the last frost is definitely gone. When planting them out, dwarf beans can be planted out at 10 centimeters apart in single rows. Potatoes. A lot like carrots, potatoes are a lot of fun to grow because you don't know until harvest what you're going to get when you dig them up. Last year was our first time growing potatoes and we grew them in the ground and we did all right. This year we want to grow a lot more so we've decided we're going to grow them in tyres and containers. We always like to upcycle everything we can so we thought tyres would be a great way to grow potatoes. We've already got our early crop potatoes in these tyres and our main crop potatoes in these tyres. Um, but don't worry if you haven't got them in the ground yet, you've still got time. Um, you need to get them in by the end of May, really. Don't worry if you haven't got them in the ground yet. We're finding because of the cold weather we've had in April, everything we've planted outside is going a lot slower than we would have thought. So to grow potatoes, you will need to chit the seed potato for a couple of weeks before you plant them. This is when you place the seed potato in something like an egg box and leave them in a, a light, dry place, like a north-facing windowsill. The process for growing potatoes in tyres is quite straightforward. Line the inside of the tyre with a reusable plastic bag. This is to stop the rubber contacting the soil. Then fill a thin layer of compost in the bottom of the tyre. Place your seed potatoes around 30 centimetres apart with the sprouts pointing up and then cover with at least five centimetres of well rotten compost. To increase the yield of your harvest, once there is about seven centimetres of growth above the soil, Cover it with a layer of compost or straw. This is to encourage the plant to grow more tubers, therefore more potatoes rather than more foliage. It is pretty much the similar process for growing in containers as well. You want quite a deep container, so you can keep adding the layers of compost to encourage more potatoes to grow. Strawberries. Everybody loves strawberries. Along with tomatoes, strawberries are usually one of the first plants someone grows. If you haven't planted your strawberry plants yet, then May is a good time to do it. 
You can buy young strawberry plants from garden centres and they will last for about three to four years. Strawberries grow best in full sun in a light, well-drained, fertile soil. You can grow them in the ground or containers. Don't expect a good crop the first year of planting. At the end of last season, we collected all the runners or baby plants and planted them in the raised bed over winter. And in March, we moved them into our extended strawberry bed. When planting, plant each strawberry plant about 45 centimeters apart. Plant strawberries where they haven't been grown for at least three years or choose a fresh site to grow them in after three seasons. Water them regularly, especially after just planting and while the berries are developing. Remember to cover with a netting to protect from the getting eaten by birds. Pak choy. We've become a little bit obsessed with pak choy recently. We love to eat it, so we're planning on growing a lot of it this year. Last year we grew some in our raised bed. Um, last month we sown some in the bed on the ground here, and then we're going to sow some more in the raised bed in May. To sow pak choy, sow in a sunny position in a rich compost. Sow seeds thinly, 2 cm deep in rows 30 cm apart. Cover with a thin layer of rich compost and water thoroughly. Gradually thin seedlings to 10 cm for baby leaf or 30 cm for mature plants. The thinnings can be eaten. Keep plants well watered throughout the growing period to avoid bolting, which is running to seed and lack of flavour. Hopefully May is going to be a lot warmer than April was and the seeds will germinate quicker and they could be picking off leaves to eating within a month. Radishes, they're quick and easy to grow vegetable. Last year we grew them in our raised bed and it did quite well, we got quite a good harvest. Um, we've already sown one set of radish in this ground bed and they've come out all right. Um, give them a couple more weeks and then they'll need to be thinned out. It's best to sow radish seeds little and often for small but continuous harvests. Aim to provide consistent conditions to ensure they grow well without any checks to their growth. Sow in the spot where they're to grow. This can be in the ground, in a container or even in a growing bag. Sow seeds about one centimeter deep and 2.5 centimeters apart. Summer radishes need to be grown steadily and harvested young to ensure they remain succulent. If left too long, they become woody and inedible. Pull as required, but before they get too large. Make your time to get your next lot of radish sowed, and then we're going to do another one in June, which will mean we'll have a constant supply of radish throughout the summer. Thanks for watching today's video. That was a look at some of the vegetables that you can start to sow and grow in May. Let us know in the comments below what you're growing and how you're getting on.